Hello, welcome to the Will Preach for Food podcast. I'm Doug. I'm pastor here at Faith Lutheran Church. We're based out of Shelton, Washington, and we're a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. I want to thank you for tuning in today. I want you to know that faith is a beloved, affirming community, striving to grow closer to and more like Jesus for the sake of the world. And you can learn more about faith at our website, www.faithshelton.org. Well, happy Pentecost Sunday. This time of the year, the Christian church likes to celebrate its birthday, recalling the first day that the followers of Jesus received the gift of the Holy Spirit of God. The spirit that empowered Jesus to perform miracles and wonders now empowered the church then and now to perform those same miracles and wonders. The spirit is what motivates and encourages Christians to become missionaries and evangelists to the end of the earth, then and now. And the spirit also intervenes in the life of a Christian at a very personal, intimate level as well often giving very specific instruction or encouragement at critical junctures of our lives. We're sometimes most receptive to the Holy Spirit when we're experiencing disruption or crisis. And these interventions sometimes uh, occur as visions or angel visits, dreams, or coincidences. Well, if you can relate to the experience of a crisis or disruption in your life or routine these days, or if you've had one of those Holy Spirit interventions or God moments, then I hope today's message speaks to you and gives you encouragement and maybe even some insight into how God is working in your life, working for your good. I also believe that the Spirit may be giving the community of faith a specific word as well, and that word is this, the children are worth it. Please open your Bible to Romans chapter 8, verse 22. And we're going to take a look at what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit's involvement in your life and in our world. But first, I'm going to tell you a story. Our family was living in Enumclaw, just up the road from here toward Mount Rainier. Our old Kirby vacuum cleaner, which we had bought used in Williston, North Dakota, was needing a tune-up and some new bags and belts. The closest Kirby store was in Auburn. So we dropped off our Kirby one day, and I returned a week later to pick it up. I arrived at the store. The attendant was in the back. There was a Bible opened on the store counter next to the register. Well, the woman came out from the back. I handed her the ticket. She produced our shiny, refurbished Kirby vacuum cleaner with a fresh supply of bags and belts. I paid the bill, and As I'm ready to walk out the door with merchandise in hand, the woman called out to me and said, God wants me to tell you that the children are worth it. Now, let's read from the book of Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse 22. The Apostle Paul writes, We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit intercedes for us through wordless groans. The one who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love God. Who've been a call, who have been called according to God's purpose. Here ends the reading. The writer of this letter to a congregation in Rome is a missionary pastor. His name is Paul. And he's, na- he's naming the reality of life on planet Earth. Life is hard. Things rarely go according to plan. And that most of us, most of the time, if we're honest, have no idea what we're doing. 
And he says here that this is true not only for, for humans, but really for the whole world. Everything and every creature um, on it is engaged in a painful, lengthy struggle called life. He compares it to the pains of labor and childbirth, which, by the way, is a very dangerous comparison to make for those of us who have not actually experienced the pains of labor and childbirth. (laughs) But his point is that while whatever it is we're experiencing or feel or see or wrestle with now, as painful and messy as it is, we are still moving forward toward a future hope, something better, a new creation, God is birthing something new, something good. God is setting up and bringing into being something for the good of all of humanity, for all of creation. The old t-shirt my mom had when I was little said, Be patient. God isn't finished with me yet. And that's true of all creation. God didn't just finish everything 6,000 years ago or 6 billion years ago. God is still creating. It's ongoing, it's messy, it's painful. And we don't know exactly what the finished product is supposed to look like. In the meantime, however, we're not left entirely in the dark. We have an advocate, a partner, someone who's on the inside who can help us make sense of things, point us in the right direction, help us in our weakness, the Bible says. Paul says that this is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. This Spirit is ready to go to bat for you. This Spirit has your back. This is the Spirit that Jesus promised to us in John chapter 16, when he says that we're going to receive the Spirit of truth and that the Spirit of truth will guide us in all truth. Which brings us back to a Kirby vacuum cleaner store in Auburn, Washington. God wants me to tell you that the children are worth it. Now, so far as I know, I had never met this woman. At most, I think I had acknowledged and affirmed her open Bible on the counter. But I do wonder how the exchange came about. Maybe she was just the sort of person who always sent people out of her store with some cryptic fortune or life advice. Maybe she was a grandma or a mom, and she had compassion for someone who walked in looking like a slightly stressed, youngish dad trying to keep up with all the things, including vacuum cleaners. Maybe she was told by God that we were making decisions at Trinity Lutheran Church about youth and family ministry, and she was given that word to pass on to me. Maybe she was an angel. Maybe I imagined the whole thing. And maybe it was for such a time as today. I have had a very unsettled week this week because life is often unsettling, right? (laughs) On the home front, my folks were dealing with some health issues. My son came for a great visit. Meanwhile, as a church, we're emerging from this 16-month stretch of quarantines and masking and social distancing and virtual church. Now, almost this whole time, I've had a fairly regular routine for producing my sermon and my podcast, and most of that went out the door this week. So full disclosure, this is a Saturday morning sermon draft. And I find myself wondering if I'm being asked to pass on the word that was given to me in an Auburn vacuum cleaner store, that the children are worth it. Being a kid is never easy. Some of us grew up in a pretty stable and loving household. Many of us did not. And even the best parents have blind spots and deficiencies. Some of the things we were taught to do as parents years ago are now roundly condemned in the latest research. And beyond family life, there's school, grades, girls, bullying, hormones, acne, braces, And did I mention girls? (laughs) The point is that it's always tough being a kid. And I can't imagine a tougher time to be a kid than what kids have gone through over the last 16 months. Good Lord. School, then no school, then homeschool, then school on Zoom, then hybrid school. And the isolation, 
so much masking, so much social media, so much screen time. So little touch, no sports, no friends, no activities, no proms or graduations, no dorms, no neighbors, no grandparents, no vacations, and no church, no Sunday school or youth groups or mission trips or Bible camp, no stimulating theological discussions with the pastor in confirmation class. Now this one's the worst, am I right? As difficult as this time has been for COVID patients, families, and and victims, as tough as this time has been for on healthcare workers, senior care providers, and nursing home residents, as hard as this time has been on small businesses, churches, the economy, and our national soul, children and their parents have had it the hardest. I don't think I've acknowledged that from the pulpit or from this podcast, but there you go. Kids have had it the hardest. Parents have had it the hardest. And so as we move forward as the people of Faith Lutheran Church, we need to recognize that children and young families have suffered the most during this pandemic and that therefore we need to put the needs and hopes of youth and children and their parents at the top of the list when it comes to our priorities, our reopening, our restarting, and our re-entry into normal church life this summer and fall. For this reason, I'm asking everyone to continue wearing masks when coming to worship on Sunday mornings, at least for a few more weeks. Why? Because children aren't vaccinated and the children are worth it. I'm also thrilled that the council this past week has prioritized the hiring of a new full-time youth and family staff position here at Faith to be in place by the fall. I don't know if we can manage a full vacation Bible school this summer, but we definitely want Sunday school back. We want confirmation. We want youth ministries in place. And more importantly, we want a lasting, consistent, enduring ministry with youth and children that really we haven't had here at Faith since Linda or Becca. We need youth and family children's ministry staff. Why? Because the children are worth it. Make no mistake, Emily's been an amazing gift to faith over the past year, but she's going off to grad school in the fall. Jordan Leach stepped in a few years ago when the church needed her, and she rose to the occasion. But they would both echo what I'm saying right now. The children are worth it. And as we're coming to the end of one of the weirdest school years in recent history, I want to shout out to and say thank you to all the teachers, professors, aides, paraeducators, school administrators who've ridden the waves of COVID and politics and Zoom. Thank you for persevering in your passion to teach and inspire our children and grandchildren and future generations. Why have you stayed in the game? It's because you know, because the children are worth it parents and parental units, way to go. Somehow you've managed to juggle kids and careers. You became homeschool teachers and neighborhood activity directors. You found ways to provide safety and love for your children during these, yes, I'll say it, unprecedented times. Well done. Your children, all the children, are worth it. So people of faith, let's keep praying. Let's keep moving ahead. Let's endure these hardships and birth pangs. Let's put our hope in God and listen to the Holy Spirit. Let's keep wearing masks and getting the vaccine and hiring staff and planning Sunday school. Why? Together. Because the children are worth it. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. I'd love to hear your stories of Holy Spirit interventions. I'd I'd be honored to pray with you if you're going through a tough time right now. As a congregation, the people of faith, we want to help you raise your kids in the Christian faith. You can reach out to me via email, doug at faithshelton.org, or through our website, www.faithshelton.org. You can like us on Facebook, Subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or any other way you listen to podcasts. Thank you for your ongoing financial support for the Ministries of Faith. Thank you, Chaz and Emily, for your production work on this podcast and our worship offerings every week. 
and I leave you with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.